Bishop Wooded here and welcome to yet another episode of The Bible Says This, What Say You? Psalms 33 verse 4 and the A clause says, For the word of the Lord is right. Now, concerning the word of the Lord and concerning the work of the church, I want to talk to you today about a portion or, or uh, upper room, a uh, something about our church. Let me rephrase it. I want to talk to you about a portion of our church or the work that our church does that we do not talk about very much. Now, Jesus said this in Matthew's gospel, chapter six and verse three. He says, but when thou doest alms, let not thy right hand or thy left hand know what your right hand doeth, uh, that thine alms may be in secret. And the father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. You know, when you give alms, almsgiving is the thing that you do to help those who are less fortunate. Alms fall into the category of uh, feeding, or even if, if you give someone a suit or a dress, a coat or a hat, shoes or whatever, those are arms. And you're not supposed to stand up and testify and say, you know, I gave brother so-and-so that suit he's wearing, or I gave sister so-and-so that dress she's wearing. Well, the Lord says, if you do that, you cancel all of the good things that God was going to give you for helping that person who was less fortunate and the admiration or the ire of people will be your reward. So when we do alms, we're supposed to do them in secret. Now, offerings, on the other hand, are supposed to be public. David said, I will pay my vows now unto the Lord into the presence, in the presence of all of his people. We are supposed to make known what we give to God. God, but what we give to each other is supposed to be kept in secret. There is arms that we do in secret to help people. One of my key blessings is not saints what you see me give, it's what you don't see. It's what Pam and I do in secret. And my do the Lord reward openly. But as a church, I've noticed that many times because upper room doesn't blow its own horn, we don't talk very much about what we do, then there are those who, because they don't hear it, they assume that it's not being done. So, you know, uh, just like at uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, you, you, you see on the news this group and that group, this, this, this group, they're giving away a turkey or they're giving away a dinner for Thanksgiving or for Christmas. They're, 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 they're feeding this group or that group, which is good work. Thank God for those ministries. But if you notice, Upper Room is never mentioned in uh, uh, those commercials. The news doesn't cover us because... We know that people have to eat every day. We know that people have to eat weekly, that people get hungry at other times other than Christmas and Thanksgiving and on special occasions. So we do it all the time. So therefore, when you do it all the time, there's no point in calling uh, the news or calling the newspapers or inviting the media over to cover this special event because for us here at the Upper Room, it is not a special event. We are concerned about people. We're concerned about people's welfare. The Bible says in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15 and verse 32, then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. Look at our loving Lord. Three days of revival, three days of the Lord preaching and teaching and healing. But at the end of the revival, the Lord says, hey, these people have been with me for three days and I cannot send them away without food. I can't send them away without a meal lest they faint uh, on the way. And he said, in verse 33, he says, and his disciples said unto him, for whence have we even bread to feed such a multitude out here in this wilderness? And as you know, what the Lord did is the Lord took a large lunch and he mirac miraculously fed the people. In the book of James, we see James uh, giving an example of feeding those who are less fortunate 
to teach how faith works. James chapter chapter 2 verse 14. He says, what doth it profit my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and hath not works? Can faith save him? He says, what's the profit in, in saying I believe, but there are no corresponding actions. And he gives an example. He says, if a brother or a sister, uh, King James here, be naked and destitute of daily food. That is, if they are poorly or they're insufficiently clothed or poorly or insufficiently fed, if they've been uh, a long time, long standing in that condition, if they don't have enough clothes, they don't have enough food, he says, uh, if they are naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace and be warmed and be filled, notwithstanding you give not those things which are needful for the body. James says, what doth it profit? He said, how does it help? You mean to tell me they're hungry and they're naked and they don't have anything and your solution is, by faith be filled, by faith be full. James says that doesn't profit the hungry and the cold person at all. And he says just as that is fruitless, he says even so, faith without works is dead. Now this is James not really teaching on feeding the hungry or clothing those who are insufficiently clothed, but this is James teaching how faith works. Faith has to have a corresponding action. Otherwise, it's not faith. But now if we turn to uh, John's gospel or to John's epistles, the epistle of John, 1 John chapter uh, 3, now John uses feeding those who are less fortunate and helping those who are less fortunate as evidence of true salvation. As a matter of fact, one of the ways that we prove that we are saved, to use a phrase that my pastor, the late great James Henry Turner used to use, to prove that we are saved like the Bible says. He says you got to help those who are less fortunate. You know, it's amazing how we claim to know Jesus, but we have no compassion for our brothers and sisters, or we only have compassion at Thanksgiving or Christmas. But Jesus, John had something to say about the proof of our salvation. He says this in uh, third, uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 16, he says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. Here's how we know the love of God. Jesus died for us. And he says this, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Look at this. The most that we can do to show our love for each other is to be willing to lay down our lives for each other because Christ laid down his life for us. Look at the extent that we should be called or at least willing to go to for our brothers and sisters in Christ. He says, but, now listen to this, listen to this, but whosoever hath this world's goods, the Lord have blessed you, you got it going on, you got it going and coming, the Lord has smiled on you, and I don't, listen, I don't, I don't grudge, I don't begrudge people whom the Lord has blessed, I mean, if you've got it like that, praise the Lord, as long as you've gotten, gotten it legally, and, and you've worked hard, and the Lord has rewarded you, hey, more power to you, I'm not one of those folk who are envious of successful people, and I certainly do not believe that the successful the successful person is successful at my expense. Somehow they are where they are. You know, I'm where I am. I'm down on this low level because they're up there. So it's my job to try to pull them down. No, 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 no. All I want to know from, uh, from those who are up is uh, what do you know that I don't? I don't want a handout. I'll go to work and make it happen for myself because I can. And the Lord has blessed me and the Lord has blessed you. But he says, now, if you have someone here who has this world's goods. Now, listen, 
and he seeth his brother have need and shut up his bowels of compassion for him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? How can you claim that the love of God is in you and you see your brother, natural brother, brother in the Lord, uh, a fellow American. So he's not saying that you, we're supposed to be a sitting duck to every, every con. And he's not saying that we're supposed to carry people who won't work. Because the Bible is clear on that. The Bible says if a man don't work, neither shall he eat. But all people fall on hard times. Everybody goes through difficult circumstances. And if you see your brother uh, who is suffering and uh, he lacks this world's goods. The Bible says how, uh, and you shut up your bowels of compassion, how dwelleth the love of God in you? And let me tell you what compassion is and what compassion is not. Compassion is not looking at someone who is in need and you feel sorry for them. You feel bad for them. You're hated for them. Or you just, oh, it just breaks your heart to see them that way, but you do nothing about it. That's not compassion. Compassion is you do something to make their plight uh, better. You don't, have, you don't have to even feel that bad, you know. You don't have to have that, oh, my heart is so broken. You have to have that. Just do something about it. Just help. If, I, if, if the person is hungry and you have food, they don't need tears from you. They need a sandwich. That will do it. You don't have to have tears. Now, I, I, I do believe this. Anyone you help. And we say this at the church, anyone you assist, anybody that you bless, you never do it at the expense of their dignity. You never do it by belittling them. You don't hand the blessing to them, acting like you don't want to give it to them. You see, because see, when the Lord blesses us, the God of the Bible, he always blesses us, us with a smile. And even whether we deserve it or not, and I guess uh, probably 99.9% .9 of the time we don't deserve it because if we got what we deserve, we'd all be lost. By grace are we saved. <laughs> he has blessed us and smiled upon us. So now what we want to do, we want to display the love of God in that when we bless people and when we feed people and when we have our clothes, coat drives and, and, and drives up to, to collect clothing and different things to give to those who are less fortunate. When we visit the rest homes, visit the homeless shelter, visit the men's shelter, the women's shelter, and we do these things, yes, we do these things, my friends, at the upper room weekly. Hallelujah. And uh, so when we do these things, we want to do them with a service with a smile because it's all the love of God. Now, he says, listen, he says, look, my little children, let us love not in word, neither in tongue, but in deed. Look at this. But in deed and in truth. That is the truth of God. In God's truth. Indeed, we're giving something away. We're inconveniencing ourselves to help someone else. Now, in the next segment, I'm going to bring before you a young lady whom I just consider a heroine of the faith. When I saw her today, I called her a superstar because she heads the portion of our ministry that do these things. This is an incredible woman of God. She, listen, she's a beautiful lady, but you know what? She will, will dress down, put on uh, her work clothes and get up on the truck and help unload the truck. She brings food to those who are hungry. I've had people to walk up to me, non-members, elderly, wonderful people, to say to me, Pastor Wooden, I do not have to choose between food and medicine as a result of the work of the upper room and as a result of the work of this young lady who is going to be a part of segment two. So we're talking about what we do at the church in the community. We want you to know that we are busy reaching out uh, to the temporal needs of the people. And we do all this stuff, not through government grants, but through the tithe and offerings of the members. Listen, join me for segment two of the Bible says this. What say you? <laughs> 